task is to get the part cut out with a bandsaw. I'm cutting off a small slice on the end to get rid of some chucking that occurred. And cutting the final point. I'm finding the center of the piece and I'm going to be installing a face plate. Face plate is used to initially mount the piece on the lathe. I'm starting rough turning the piece here, taking off the bark. There are quite a few wormholes and small defects that I'm looking at, so I'm actually going to be forced to make this project a little bit smaller than I initially thought. Here I'm marking the piece to determine where I'm going to be setting up my area to be carved. I'm cutting a mortise here that I'll use to turn the piece around and mount it on my chuck. I'm also going to be using some beading tools to put a little decoration on the bottom. I'm using my parting tool here to finalize the area that's going to be carved. I'm going to try and set the depth and then I'll eventually cut the cold out to start the carving process. Well, there was a knot in there someplace I didn't see, obviously, and uh, took a big chunk out of the foot. Now we're going to have to come up with a fix for that. Okay, I'm reducing the diameter of the project here. I'm going to try and get it down below where the damage occurred on the foot so that I've got a nice clean cylinder to work with again. Now I'm resetting the carving area marks. Hopefully it'll work this time and I'll blow up. Well, we have a bad crack here. Uh, another fix in process. My plan of attack is to roughly hollow out the bowl portion of the project and get the walls as thin as possible. And I'm hoping that by doing that, I can uh, minimize the amount of epoxy I'll have to use and ensure that the epoxy will go all the way through the side walls where the cracks are. You can see the crack here a little bit better. It actually goes all the way through, and there's several other smaller cracks. I'm preparing some epoxy. This is a thin, fast-setting epoxy, and I'm also going to be mixing in some very fine brass powder. I'm hoping that the brass powder will be about the same color as some of the naturally occurring stains in the rest of this piece. Here I'm filling the uh, major crack and getting ready to fill some of the other cracks that are in the bowl portion of the piece. You can see that the epoxy is cured overnight. It's a little funky right now, but I think it'll be okay once it's peeled away and I get some finish on there. Bringing up my rubber chucky and the tailstock for a little additional support. Here I'm starting to peel off the epoxy and do the final outer forming.
using the round nose scraper here to clean up the outside of the project. Basically, get rid of all of the tool marks and get ready for the final sanding. The outside is shaped roughly and uh, ready for final sanding and the carving steps. Doing some final project power sanding on the piece. I'm starting with uh, 100 grit. I'm going to run it up to 220 grit, followed by some sanding sealer, and then I'll eventually sand the entire project to 320 grit. I'm using a water-based sanding sealer. Fills in the pores a bit and raises the grain. After it dries, I'll sand with 220 and then finally 320 grit for the entire project. The project's been sanded to 320 grit, and now I'm drawing on the area to be carved, basically the three trunks that I'll be carving out. Uh, you can tell that I was not an art major in school, but it'll be good enough for what I'm trying to do here. I start the carving process with a small drill, and basically I'm just trying to remove the bulk of the material. I'm not drilling all the way through, just trying to get it started here so I can get at it with my other tools. The main thing here is not to uh, drill too close to the bottom of the bowl, which is finished right now. The last thing you want to do is go through the bowl. Here I'm carving, I just really go at it with a bunch of different chisels and gouges, mostly chisels, and uh, it's a slow process, takes some time. You can see in the inset some of the actual chisels and tools that I use in this process. If you take your time and stay in the line, it works fine, and you get the bulk of the material out pretty quickly. Here's the piece after I'm done rough carving it. You'll see one of the trunks is marked with a red marker. That's because I got a little aggressive carving that's thin. I wanted to make sure I had it noted for the next step. I use a Dremel tool for my final carving process. I use a pretty big assortment of bits. You can see in the inset some of the stuff that I do use. It takes a little bit of time. Again, if you stay within the lines and just uh, work your way through it, you can eventually come up with a shape that's pleasing and will look nice in the end. The raw carving and Dremel work is now complete. And I finalized the project by using hand sanding to get all the little nibs and fuzzies and everything else out. Um, just work through the grits. Here I'm using a pick to get out some of the fine particles inside the carvings. I'm using an acrylic finish here. I put about five coats on and I sand between each coat. It takes about 10 minutes for each coat to dry. After the acrylic has had enough time to fully cure, I go through and buff the entire project. I'll run through a triple E white diamond and then finally put a coat of carnival wax on top. 